Dion Win. Hi everyone, welcome back. You may welcome for the very first time and I'm here again with another video for you and today will be the latest episode in my series So What You Want To Get Into and this is a series dedicated to the directors of world cinema that you may or may not know about and the best entry points into their films, a little bit about their style, about their history and the best way to approach them. And so far in this series, we've looked at the works of Hong Sang Soo, Sai Ming Lang, Claire Denis, Claire Lee Raika, Abel Ferrara, Pedro Moldova. And this month we are looking at probably one of the gems, the true gems of modern Japanese cinema, and that is Toshiaki Toyoda. And this is a director that I feel like does not get the praise that he deserves sometimes. I think within kind of smaller niche communities, he gets it, but he really is an auteur and there are various reasons for that and that's why we're going to be discussing it today. So the way we're going to be doing this is that we're going to look at my initial experience, my first ever film of that director and what I actually thought of it. Then I will be discussing more about the style, the subtext and a little bit more about Toyota's work. And then I'll be giving you three recommendations of films to watch. The first one will be the considered masterpiece of the filmmaker. The second will be my personal favorite. And the third will be the all rounder, the film that kind of represents all of the core components of what the filmmaker is about. So enough introducing, let's get talking. My first experience with Toshiaki Toyota was actually Porno Star, his directorial debut, which is one of those kind of interesting youth angst, generation X crime capers that I found to be really profound, very gritty. I enjoyed kind of how mood inducing the ambience and the mise-en-scene of the film actually is. But the notable thing about Toyota, and it's something that you will look, especially particularly in the first quarter of his films, is that sense of young outsiders and misfits trying to kind of establish themselves within their world. And while I don't think Toyota's worlds are always kind of in the norm, I think he kind of creates very unique visions of his perspectives of politics, of society, of culture. And within Porno Star, you get this kind of brooding mentality and this sense of alienation that he builds. And another thing that we will talk about a lot here is his music because my God, that guy loves music and the way that he kind of needle drops songs into his films are absolutely outstanding. And some of the best needle drops you will see in cinema. And I actually got to see this film through this early years, Toshiaki Toyo, the set from Third Winter Films. This box set I believe is out of print, but you can still buy it on secondhand market. And it's really a great kind of entry point into understanding him. There's some really good features in it, but also Third Window did another set with quite a few more of his later films and including the Resurrection Trilogy, which we will get into later on. But this is the thing about Toyota. I kind of really dug in from the beginning and I think to myself, why does this guy not get the attention that he deserves like Sean Son or like Koreeda, like Kurosawa, like Mike? This guy is making fascinating films on smaller budgets and he's a lot more daring and Porno Style was a really great way to understand a little bit more about him. Now to the style and subtext of Toyota and as we've shed on already, the sense of youth culture, the sense of alienation, the sense of misfits, the sense of outsiders is really prominent within his films. And he actually dabbles in so many kind of formulas of film. He looks at documentary, mid-length shorts, period dramas, low budget, even crowdfunding. The last couple of films have been crowdfunded, I believe. Go Spooky Yourself is one of them. If I'm wrong, apologies, but that's what I've read. So it's all good. But still, he has this sense of having full control, full creative control of his films. And this is what I admire the most out of him. Because the thing is, you look at maybe somebody like Koreeda who actually has a bit more constrictions because he is the poster boy of Japanese cinema these days. But Toyota really has this time to experiment, to explore. But he keeps everything so tight. He's very similar to a Moldovar. He has uses the same actors, he uses the same crew, and that kind of development is something that I really find so interesting. But this early notion has kind of evolved over time, and I think as he's gone older, we kind of have a little bit more mature characters. While that youth sense is still there, I think that's the thing. I think when you grow up, that sense of rebelliousness is still inside you, and I think it kind of evokes itself quite a bit through his films. You see it in the documentary Unchained, obviously Blue Spring is a really prominent film, Nine Souls, which is a little bit more kind of mature with the group that he has in it. 
Then you go to Hanging Gardens, The Blood of Rebirth, Monsters Club. It just continuously changes and changes and that, that dynamic is still there. The core essence of understanding him is that. But the thing is, he, through all of his films, the camera movement is so rigorous. It creates its own kind of aura. It can, it's, it's his own identity. And this sense of kind of juxtaposing imagery across what the dialogue is saying to you is really fascinating. And this color palette is so strong, so vivid. Reds and blues are very prominent, gray colors as well. But these mean something, this kind of understanding of mood and tone. I think particularly when you look at a film like Nine Souls or Blue Spring or Ghost of Puka Yourself or The Day of Destruction, they all have something really interesting to say through that. And this kind of sense of visual footprint, the visual elements of his films are what make you stay most of the time because they are so striking. And I think he goes for kind of classic shots, but also he kind of evokes a lot of his own unique take and taste within this kind of mindset. Another profound element that you will see a lot in these films, they are kind of male driven and this kind of exploration of masculinity within kind of Japanese society is something that maybe isn't always looked on, but he really does push for it, especially when you look at something like Blue Spring, which is something about boys becoming men, but in this kind of weird clockwork orange sense or we go to kind of Monsters Club, or we go to I Am Flash. It is this kind of brooding essence of understanding who you are as a male, but also how you can be yourself. And this, again, reflects on the kind of uniqueness of Toyota. Toyota is that kind of filmmaker that really pushes the boundaries. And I think he puts so much into his characters. He writes quite a lot of his own scripts. and has full kind of understanding of what he wants and that execution is always so striking and I think fundamentally from the beginning as we said with Porno Star it really just shows to you that he had a vision and that vision has continued throughout all of his films and while it may not be obvious all the times when you kind of revisit the films which I find to be really crucial sometimes with Toyota is you get to understand a little bit more about who he is. As Toyota was building a notoriety for himself in the early 2000s the, the, the vast success of films like Blue Spring and Nine Souls really elevated him up the ladder in Japanese cinema. Unfortunately he was arrested for something I really can't be asked talking about because we're not here to talk about people's personal lives but this was the reason that he kind of went down the pecking order and was kind of blacklisted by some studios and this was around the release of Hanging Garden which again is a very profound film a very interesting kind of social exploration that he went for and as time went on then he obviously made Monsters Club he made Blood of Rebirth, I Am Flash so that he was continuously making films but he wasn't receiving the notoriety and I think this is where the slump has actually begun in ways of the West not being able to access his films because maybe Japan just did not want these films to be seen and I think that's a great shame because the more people that watch his films will really understand a lot more about him but these social political messages have been something that have been continuously carrying on up until the Resurrection Trilogy which has been absolutely dynamite all kind of mid-length feature films they're, they're no longer than an hour and 15 minutes and that's something I really love about them and I think when we look at Wolf's Calling, Day of Destruction and Go Spooky Yourself they are really kind of heavy hitting films they kind of combine history, heritage, this period drama setting and all slapped together with the current issues that we have in the world and I think the way that Toyota kind of channels his angst for the higher powers that be uh, is so evidently powerful and really rejuvenating to see. He really kind of goes for it with this and it's a real passion project I think for him and I think The Day of Destruction which is a film we'll talk about a little bit later on is kind of the epitome of what a COVID film can be and the utilization of fear through information and the fear of the unknown through disease is really pungent and this sense of kind of human actions is timeless through this sense of combining the past and the present together in these films really just show how amazing he is and I will tirade about this as much as I can but I would highly emphasize anybody to check out Toyota's work. It's a body of work that is so vital to watch, especially if you are into 
Asian cinema, if you're into Japanese cinema in particular, because again, the, the, the names of Koreeda are names that we should be praising, yes, but when you have somebody that has such amazing work on very small budgets, on, on passion and heart, and on pure conviction of telling it as it is, Toyoda is that filmmaker. And I really feel so humbled and privileged to be able to go through all of this work that he has. And in ways, I'm glad that he doesn't actually work for the system. He just goes and creates work that means something to him and he has that integrity to kind of carry on. But this polarizing sense of youth angst, of politics, of the outsiders, of music, of camera movements, of colour, everything that you can consider to be a good director and a prominent director is within Toshiaki Toyoda and in my eyes and in the eyes of a lot of people within our community he is a true master of the modern era and is an actual auteur. That word gets thrown out a lot but when you go into filmmaking, you don't go to kind of make the next die hard. You go there to create stories that you want to share. And Toyota has done that and he's achieved that in bucket loads. Now then, to my recommendations. And the first one will be the considered masterpiece. And in my humble opinion, I do personally think that is Nine Souls. It perfectly encapsulates this sense of Toyota. It shows the story of a group of outsiders, a vast group of men who are doing things that they shouldn't be doing and come from different backgrounds, different stories, and it all culminates into this very darkly humoured, enlightening tale and it has beautifully emotive camera work that really struck me. I just could not believe how indulging this story is and I really don't want to go into the story. You should really be going into the story blind, trust me, because that's the best way to do it. And I think just the way that Toyota just shows that you can easily judge people but until you know their real stories, you cannot really judge them. And Nine Souls is that film that just hit me the minute I saw it. It's not my personal favourite, but I do think that it's the film that most people would regard as his best. And I really do think you should definitely check it out. There is a single Amore version of this available through Third Window. And obviously it is on the early years set as well. And I, yeah, there's, um, what have we got on it? I think it's, uh, you get a audio commentary, uh, making of outtakes. So it's really handy to actually see a lot more of the process. I actually really enjoyed the making of on this one actually, because it does really give you a bit more of a perspective of, of how Toyota works. Now to my personal favorite, and this comes from 2020 and I've mentioned it already, is the Day of Destruction. I think this is one of the most striking pieces of mid-length film I've ever seen. This is 57 minutes in length. It was Huss's favorite film of 2020 and I can see why. And I really thought to myself when I watched this film, this there is so much kind of resonance of what the human condition is right now. Obviously it was to coincide with the Olympics and it really was a kind of monstrous kind of creature feature that kind of had so much paranoia, so much kind of sense of fear and dread and this idea of a disease kind of flows through this whole film but I really just enjoy the characterization again the music of it and it's really impactfully shot because I really do think that it's quite emotional within its kind of framing there is a sense of dread and fear within it but also it's very enlightening and very spiritual and it opens up into something really profound. And the weird thing is people could easily tell you, oh yeah, mid-length, you know, it's not a real film. It is a fucking film, trust me. It's probably done more impact in 57 minutes than some of the major hitters in cinema today. And this one's actually available on the second Toyota set from Third Window. Um, I think there's a, an American single Amory of it, but if you want to get a bunch of his films in one set, this is kind of the one to go for. But The Day of Destruction really is one of those films that 
I just could watch <laughs> quite a few times. Now then, to my third and final pick, and this is the all-rounder, the film that I feel like embodies everything that we've discussed today about Toyota, and I do definitely think that has to be Blue Spring, and this kind of early millennial experience of the Gen Z nation is so profound, so heavy, so humorously weird, so violent, and the embodiment of what it is to be an outsider and a non-conformist is all in this film and I think Blue Spring is that kind of eruption of understanding who Toyota is and who he still is as a filmmaker. I think the, 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 the build-up to this film is really impactful, the music is amazing, the issues it kind of tackles about masculinity, about growing up, about becoming a man, and setting yourself within the world. It's all here. The colorization of this is absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely striking. The camera work is so inventive and so crazy. There is actually a Blu-ray available from Third Window and I would highly recommend you to purchase this. It's a really worthy purchase, just as any of the other Toyota films that we've talked about today. But Blue Spring really is that film that I think that would kind of set the tone for you of him as a filmmaker. I think his evolution has grown since then for sure, but Blue Spring is kind of like the 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 the, the blossoming kind of filmmaker that Toyota is and what he's grown to be is something that's so fascinating and unique. So that was my video, so we want to get into Toshiaki Toyota. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and you found it informative. I do my best with these, with the research and everything like that, and Toyota's one of these filmmakers that does not have that much information about him online, but I've done what I can with him, so I hope you found it helpful. And if you are a Toyota fan, please let me know what your favorite Toyota films are in the comment section below. And if you haven't, please let me know which other filmmakers you want me to feature on this series because I do these for you. I don't do them for myself because I find them very long and <laughs> difficult to make at times. And I, I, I just do it for the love and to help you guys out. So please do let me know. I hope you're doing okay and taking care of yourselves and watching plenty of great cinema. And I will be back with another video very, very soon. So take care, bye-bye.